Glad to, to host this event. We're very glad to have everyone here. I think, as I said, the artists, Luci Luci uh, the artists, André and Nicole, I think Luciana, who is our mediator, uh, who will be our mediator uh, in a while. I think Natalie, who brought all the artists together. And of course, you guys that came to, to see a bit uh, what we have to, what we're going to talk about. And uh, we are here for, uh, we'll start by watching the Nicole's documentary about Andrea's work for 15 minutes. And after that, we will have a discussion. And in the end, we will be able to talk a bit more among ourselves uh, with some wine and Brazilian uh, bites there in the back. So to start, I would ask uh, Victor Hugo to play, uh, turn off the lights and play the, the song, uh, the, not the song, the documentary. Thank you all. That was a nice short film. A good introduction to what Andrea has been doing in his uh, residence there in Brooklyn, in his studio, right? And uh, Luciana asked me to introduce her, and she gave me some formal uh, items in her CV that I wrote here. She's an independent curator, as we know. She's also part of the New York Artists' Equity Association, right? In the 2022 People Prize Nomination Committee a member. And in 2022, she was guest curator at Residence Unlimited. And she didn't mention the most important part when the ambassador decided to use the consular space of the, the consular area where we receive people during the day uh, to display artwork. She invited Luciana to curate the first show. So, so she's a really, I think this is the boldest uh, uh, enterprise she, she, she undertook recently. And uh, what we see now is a consequence of her, of what she started. And we will be able to see the, the new show that we have opened just two days ago there. And even though we don't have the structure of our gallery, we are visited, we have so many visas as museums because so many people have uh, consular demands here. And uh, so that's just to introduce Luciana, who is our mediator, and I will uh, let her introduce the artist and the talk. Thank you so much, Luciana. Thank you, Sam. Everybody. Thank you. Thank you, Sam. Um, so, can you put the, the presentation, please? First of all, congratulations, Nicole. Uh, I saw this uh, film many times, but never in the big screen, and that makes a very big difference. So it's really amazing to see it. Um, I will start introducing Nicole, second slide. Uh, so Nicole Palacci, Palacci, Palacci. Um, is a deputy head of Reset Switzerland, where she's responsible for cultural and new news program planning. Reset is a public broadcasting company uh, for the three countries that speak Ger uh, German, Germany, Austria, and Switzerland. Uh, she's Swiss Italian, grew up in Zurich. Uh, she holds a BA in uh, audiovisual art at Basel Art Academy and a Master's in Cultural Media Studies at the Zurich University of the Arts. So Nicole, uh, we saw the, this film and I think the first question that I want to, to pose is how you got to meet Andrea and what was interesting to you in his work that you did this film. Yeah, uh, okay, thank you. First, I have to say uh, it's an honor for me to be here. And uh, boa noite, estu feliz por estar aquí. Very good Portuguese. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, I tried the whole day <laughs> to pronounce it uh, in an acceptable way. So, okay. Um, I. I did um, 
uh, a six-week film course here in the New York Film Academy. I took a sabbatical because I'm more than 20 years already in the uh, Swiss television uh, working for Presub. And so I had the opportunity to do a sabbatical. And I decided to do a film course, uh, further education, uh, because I really wanted to go back to my roots, so to say, because first I did the uh, audiovisual studies at the, in Basel at the university. So there I was involved with every step. We did the camera, we did the sound, we did everything. So uh, the couple of last years, I didn't do it by myself anymore. So I really wanted to, I really had to, the, the joy to, to go back and do it again. So I decided then I, that I will do this um, further education here in New York. And I think New York is a fantastic city. Uh, that was also a reason that I came here. And um, for my final film, I wanted to do a portrait about an artist. So first I um, asked the Swiss Institute because I know they have some from time to time also artists in residence but they didn't have one. So I made a research and I came to this residency on limited organization and I wrote a mail and immediately I get an answer from Natalie and uh, she was uh, excited about my plans and I was excited as well because I didn't uh, expect this uh, quick reaction and this openness to to, to do, to have. And uh, she uh, told me that uh, she, they have uh, Andre here in the residency. And so I went to him, to the atelier, and we met the first time. And we had a very intense uh, talk together. And I thought it's, it's just great. I really would like to do something uh, about him and about his artwork because I was really fascinated. Thank you. Uh, it was very interesting to me to see the pace of, of the film, because this is a very fast-paced city, um, results-driven, and we have this slower pace in, in a, a very artisanal, traditional technique that Andrea chose uh, to use. Uh, can you talk a little bit about this and how, if, if that, that was part of, of the project, how, how you found that, that pace? Yeah, one thing what, that uh, is fascinating for me is uh, that Andrew uh, needs time. That's, uh, he needs time for every step he's doing. And I was impressed by that because we are living in a fast world and New York City is even faster than everything else I know. And uh, when I came to the, his atelier, it was just, you know, it was silence and it was one step after the other, inhale, exhale, so to say. And uh, uh, <laughs> yeah, I was fascinated because he's thinking about every step he's doing and he takes his time for every step. And I think that's a quality that not a lot of people have anymore. They, lo they lose it and I appreciate that very much. And I do too. Uh, Victor, can you give us the next slide? I'll introduce André Ricardo. So in his paintings, André Ricardo examines the Brazilian vernacular, visual culture through images of nature, architecture, and symbols. He creates a field of investigation reflecting a powerful ancestry rooted in Latin American and Brazilian African uh, heritage. 
So Andrea was graduated in fine arts from the University of Sao Paulo, nominated to, for Prime of Pupa in 2017. His work is in public collections such as uh, Instituto Inantim, Pinacoteca do Estado de São Paulo, Museum of Arte Contemporânea da Universidade de São Paulo, and Museu de Arte de Ribeirão Preto. He is represented by Galeria Estação. In uh, the last two months, October and November, he was selected for a residency program at Residency Unlimited too. So if you, if you can give us the next slide. So this is the building where Residency Unlimited is located in, in Carroll Gardens. And this is Andrea showing his work uh, to, to a group of the residents uh, presenting what, what his work is about. So Andrea, can you share with us how your experience has been as an artist in residency, both in the program, how you feel the city, uh, how's this going for you? So, well, good night, good evening. <laughs> I'd like to thank for the audience. Um, <coughs> and I'd like to thank the club for this gift. <laughs> and also the staff of the film, Adre Boali, who is there. <laughs> uh, <clears throat> John Bravo, <clears throat> that is in, in New York more. And Lana who uh, helped us in, in the film too. And I'd like to thank uh, Ario, uh, in the name of uh, uh, Natalie, um, who uh, connected me with uh, Nicole. And um, I'd like to thank uh, Luciana and Fernanda Mazuko, the art brats, uh, who is helping me during this period here and um, doing everything to me enjoy uh, this moment, very special moment. Um, I, I would like to, to thank my gallery in Brazil, Galeria Estação. Uh, it's a great partner in my career. And that um, um, last but not least, it's very important, partner, uh, Brazilian consulate. Uh, thanks so much for uh, the scholarship to me to the residence uh, and for this space, for this talk today. Uh, but I hope I, I didn't forget any, anyone. <laughs> um, so uh, it's my first time here in New York. Um, and uh, it's a great opportunity to be here uh, in, uh, in this uh, specific uh, situation as a resident, artist resident, because I can understand the city, enjoy the city in a different way, very different way if I was just in vacation. Or, and I can have this oppor great opportunity to develop my work here for some weeks. Uh, and um, uh, feel how people, the different feedbacks of my work, uh, to be connected with uh, artists from different countries, peoples of different backgrounds, and uh, it's a great opportunity to visit uh, great collections, um, the galleries, so, it's a very exciting experience. And um, uh, I am sure that I will come back to Brazil with a lot of uh, new energy. Uh, I don't know what will happen in the work because the work uh, needs time. <laughs> we talk about it. Um, but uh, I, I'm sure, 100% sure, that this experience uh, uh, we all, um, are, are being very exciting to me uh, as an artist, uh, and um, I enjoy a lot this, this, this moment. It's interesting that you, all the time we mention the word time, because I think it's a strong component 
in the experience you are having, but also in, in the film of how time is, is just after the pandemic, especially, we are all appreciating this. So thank you for sharing. Um, there's, there was something that you said in the, in the movie that really caught me, and every time I see uh, catch, my, catch my attention again, which is the idea of having a different point of view to be here and look back to Brazil. Can you talk about this? Yeah, when you change your environment, um, and you keep doing the work in the studio, everything is different. Because to this studio, uh, to, you, to feel comfortable to, to develop your work, you need to uh, some time to understand the space, uh, to organize your tools, to understand the light. And I work with color, so uh, the, the connection with the natural light is very important. And uh, the time of each environment is very different. So the time that I had in Brazil, in my routine is very different compared with New York. And um, also, not only the environment is different, but my life is different here. Because in, in Brazil, I, am, I have a routine uh, with my family. I have two children and my wife. So I would like to thank my wife too, <laughs> because without her uh, help, I couldn't be here. And um, so in Brazil, I, I have a, a very um, um, restricted routine. Uh, wake up, uh, take care of the children, go to studio, work, 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 come back to home take the children to school. Uh, so, and here, um, it's different, I'm by myself, but at the same time, I uh, need to enjoy the people. I need to be open for the social relations and for everything that the city can offer for an artist, a lot. So good museums, open shows. Uh, so it's a very excited city. Uh, the time is very fast. And during the first two weeks, I was very afraid that if I would be able to be connected with my work, with a soul, uh, it is great demand of things here in New York. Um, and the first two weeks, I stayed for 10 hours in the studio and I was getting very stressed because I was feeling alone. And I understand that if I just work here or not, I wasn't working well uh, because I need to be connected with the city. And when I feel relaxed, when I start to enjoy the people, my friends, and, and uh, visit uh, the uh, museums and galleries and events, I feel relaxed and I, I start, I try to work in, in a short time. But the quality of the time is important. It's not how, it's not a quantity, but the quality. So here I understand that I can work two hours in a good quality, it's enough here. So, and um, it's, uh, um, give me new ideas, new possibilities to think uh, uh, the work too. Thank you. Yeah. Nicole, when you, when you got all the material and you start editing the, the final cut, uh, how uh, did you have a storyboard and you thought that what, that the, the result, what we saw is, what you you have at the end, or 
how is the, the materials you're given used and, and so on? Um, yeah, I had the storyboards, uh, of course, and uh, I had much more material than I used uh, for this film. I asked Andrew if he can give me uh, photos from his family, from his uh, father, mother, brother, and also from his uh, family now, with his wife and his children. And uh, first I thought maybe I can take this also in the film and uh, show how he's living in Brazil. And uh, we went through Dumbo also for walking. Um, but then I decided just to focus on the atelier, in the atelier while he is working um, on his uh, paintings. And especially every step, uh, to show every step before he can start to paint. So I, I, I was very fascinated from, from this, uh, all these preparings he had to do. And uh, that, that's why I just focused then on this preparation. And uh, I decided also to not to use any music, just to um, take uh, sounds. Um, he, he is doing while he's preparing. For example, the, um, how do you say, the plaster on the glass, glass plate, you hear it, or just the sounds like he, the brush over the canvas, and all these uh, little sounds that you usually don't even attend to, to it. And yes, uh, that, that was the, my thinking about how I, how I will show the, the work, the preparing, and also to have this slowliness in the film. I mean, I know the people aren't uh, used to this slowliness, the, the people are used today to quick, to quick cuts, but it wouldn't be uh, good for for Andrew's work because he he's doing it slow, good and slow. Yeah. And also, when we hear those noises, and uh, it makes it very uh, gives a sense of intimacy. I felt, especially in the big screen, it's very specific. Uh, I appreciate it that. Uh, can we see the next one, Victor? This, these are the images um, from the shooting day. Um, can, Andrea, can you tell, we, it, it looks like a New York moment, very, uh, uh, if we, we look at the, the place. Uh, can you tell us about how this crew was there, maybe Nicole and, and Andrea, and uh, details on the day of the shooting. Uh, yeah, in the first, oh, I, I'd like to, to thank Nicole for his generous eyes in the work, because you uh, took a very poetical sensibility of my work is uh, about his time, which is very important. And uh, um, I really believed uh, in this idea that a, a, a technique is not, a, um, it is a poetical choice because uh, um, it will um, be the first step in your process. And the architecture I, I, I mentioned in the film is not a mix pigmented with egg. Architecture is a discipline of work. And um, to me was in my in my career, in my process as painter, was very important to understand that time. And you have a, a great sensibility to see it. Thank you so much. <laughs> And uh, here in the beginning uh, of the day, uh, uh, my friend Ariana 
is here, <laughs> and Pedro, um, brought me a book and uh, with uh, some uh, uh, photographs of uh, Brazilian uh, vernacular architecture. And they are there, we are discussing uh, about his book. Can you see the next? Because we have the image of um, one more. One more. Okay. Yeah, here's some images of that book, uh, Pinturas e Tatibandas, by the photographer Ana Mariani, Brazilian photographer. Translates into facades and parapets. Ah, yeah. <laughs> and uh, the first, uh, in, in the beginning of the, the, the day, um, we have more people in the studio because Ariana and Pedro arrived to uh, give me the, the book, to lend me the book. And uh, we was discussing uh, uh, before I start. And uh, after we made the interview, uh, we talked around one hour. And uh, but you could couldn't feel the time. It was very nice. And after I start to work, and uh, uh, Nicole chose uh, the best uh, um, point of view. And uh, but the, the the group worked very well. But very thing, uh, very inter interesting point is the diversity of uh, nationalities in this group. Nicole is Swiss, and the Boali is Nigerian, uh, Lana, Ukrainian, and uh, John uh, is Lituan in the Brazil. <laughs> so it's, it is uh, not New York, it's, it is diversity, you know? Uh, people meet here to do things, and it was very nice, it was a very good day. I really enjoy it. You want to make a comment, Michal? I enjoyed it uh, very much as well, because uh, he, he told already all these different people from different uh, angle of the world. And uh, this, it, it's just fascinating to, to do a project together. And filming is uh, group work. That's very important, so I, I couldn't do it just by myself. You have to have all the other eyes who can uh, advise you. Maybe you forgot this or you forgot that. And uh, I think that's a, that's a great thing, the, the group work as well. And can we go for the next one? So Nicole. Um, before doing this uh, film, you did a film on artist Dolores uh, Weiss, and this film was uh, shown in uh, October in the Stats Gallery in Stuttgart. Um, can you tell us about this project and how, because um, we were discussing uh, the way the, the film was done. Can you tell this story to the audience? Yeah, yes. It's a special project because Dolores Wies uh, is my sister. And uh, she died uh, much too young, with 59. Uh, but uh, it's already 17 years ago. And she was an artist. She studied at uh, Boys at the Kunstakademie Düsseldorf. And uh, she was a couple of years older than myself. She was the oldest and the youngest in the family. And we had a very uh, um, good relation, tired relationship, my sister and me. And after she died, and a couple of years later, also her husband died. And then I realized that my sister's artwork, um, how do you say? Uh, went, went uh, she fell in oblivion. Yes, that's the word. And uh, I, I, I wanted to change this, at least for my family and for close friends of her. I didn't want it, because she did great, great art. 
and she stopped to do the artwork when she married her husband because her husband was also an uh, artist and he was uh, quite famous at the time. So, so she stopped to use uh, to do by art by herself. And after they died both, I realized uh, that uh, I had to do something for my sister. And uh, uh, then I started to do research um, where all there are all these artworks, and I went to 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 archives, also to the boys' archives in uh, in Germany, and I found there a lot of correspondence between the, them both. And I didn't know all these things, so I I also learned a lot not all, only about my sister's life, but also about the time uh, when, she, when she made art. And I met uh, three very interesting uh, women uh, who were very important for her, and these three women are part of the film. Uh, one is a gallerist, one is a um, student friend, an, an artist, and one is an art historian. So. That uh, was a very interesting work for me, and I did it uh, a couple of years because one year I, I thought I have to finish the work, but then I thought uh, I, I found another picture, so I had to cut the film again, and then I thought I found the correspondence between uh, boys and my sister, so I had to do it again. So that uh, why it took a couple of years till the film was finished. And what's coming for you after uh, her film in Melendez? What do you what are you planning for the the next year in Anna? I don't have a specific um, film in mind right now, but I know I will continue with it because I really love to do uh, films and I love to have uh, I love to I love the art world so I I think I will continue. Thank you. Yeah, thank you. Andrea, I want to open for Q and A with this slide. This is a quote from the film where you say, "My painting is the Brazil I want to believe in." Uh, how, do you want to make comments? On this? It's very important. The Brazil that I believe is not only yellow and green. The Brazil that I believe is yellow, is green, is blue, is red, is purple, is black, is every color. That's the Brazil that I believe. Thank you. So whoever wants to um, ask any questions, maybe we can give them. I really love the way you were manipulating the egg. That was really fascinating. So you, you take the, the, what, the egg white out, and you're just using the yellow. And the way you were kind of, you know, you don't break it. I mean, it, it doesn't break in your hand. So I was just very curious about the way you filmed it, Nicole, was really beautiful. Yeah. This, you know, that was a highlight of the film <laughs> for me. Uh, um, the egg shape, uh, you have different uh, possibilities to prepare the binder. Uh, um, you could use just the yolk, the yellow, or use both, the yolk and the white. I use both. Sometimes the, the, the yolk, the yellow part of the egg, is um, a mixing between uh, water and the oil. So that's a good balance, perfect balance between water and oil provides a matte surface, a beautiful matte surface. 
And um, if you look the the, the the egg tempera in the Middle Ages in Italy, for example, that use it a lot. Uh, the blue of the um, Madonna, for example, you feel the color, very piece of color, but with some deep transparency that is provided by this thin layer of the egg. But it was the way you were manipulating that I thought was fascinating. Uh, because I need to to uh, take only the what is inside of the, <laughs> the, the, the yellow part. So I need to take off the skin. Right. Yeah. That was amazing. Yeah. <laughs> and going back to time, I think that's the, all that process for me the, as an spectator, it slowed me down. So I imagine that when you get to, from outside and you get into the studio and you do all those steps, you get into a more meditative state, in a sense, that you are more focused and... It, it's, it's a very interesting thing, because I'm... I'm the painting is not um, uh, separated of the life. To me, it's the same thing. And my life, I have a lot of things to do. I have children, I have to uh, take care of the house, I have to pay the bills. So in the painting, having this, with everything happening at the same time. But the quality of the time when you are wor working is very important. And the process of the tempera provide me this attention. Uh, and this um, sensibility with the materials, because it's a pre-industrial process. It's, it's amazing if you think that the modern painting um, uh, is something that uh, come with the industrial uh, process of making the materials. So it, it tends a lot the relation between the painter and the tools and the materials. The tube of painting is a revolution because it changed totally the process. Uh, it's very different if you spend time preparing the canvas, preparing the painting, uh, mixing and balancing the, 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 the pigment and the binder. Um, by yourself, it's very different that you buy a tube of paint in the shop that is a more uh, common sense. And uh, you have a red color to use. Um, so the, the temporary is a pre-industrial process, a more artisanal, and uh, the time is, you need to be slow. Um, but at the same time, uh, um, I am working uh, and uh, I need to have a call, I need to listen to the news, I need to go out to do something and then come back. So, <laughs> um, because I'm, I'm not, uh, my, my, my life is like everyone, I have a lot of things to do. Um, I look a, a, a calm person, but inside, <laughs> in my mind, uh, I have so much thing happen, and um, but this process helped me a lot to concentrate. Any other question? I want to I want to go forward with your point because I found that uh, you were able to make that moment of the egg very poetic. So I thought it was really beautiful. And that brings me at, to the question. My point is, how did you get to act tempera, such an ancient um, practice, you know, that it's hardly seen nowadays. Oh, it's very it's nice. a Byzantine style. <laughs> it's very exactly. interesting. Yeah. yeah. yeah um, since the degree, I have an interest in techniques 
in different techniques, uh, Kriti key, oil, Picasso key, tempera, gouache. And uh, when I finished my degree, I started to research in a deep way the techniques because I would like to give class to teach painting. And um, I thought that it was a good uh, idea uh, focus in the techniques to, to teach well. And to understand the technique, you need to uh, experience the technique. And, uh, but uh, since the beginning, uh, my painting uh, requests me a good quality of color and the expansion of the space by the color. And the beginning I used the more uh, oil, but to, uh, uh, in the process I need to erase a lot sometimes, uh, and the oil is very complicated to do it. And um, I start to feel uh, the good quality, the kind of purity of the color with the egg tempera. And uh, we in Brazil have a great painter who works uh, worked with egg tempera, Alfredo Volpe. And uh, he's a great reference to me. And also Eleonor Icó, that was his student, only student of Volpe. And, um, but also when I look for these facades, in the northeast of Brazil, that paint is like egg temper. Uh, not it's like a temper too, not with egg, but a kind of temper. And I feel this purity in this house. I grew up in the in, in São Paulo, in a um, uh, suburb. And when I was child, my house was uh, with this kind of temper. Rita, Rita, can you put the slide? The floor, the wall was green, the floor was red. And uh, uh, here is my, my um, um, the neighborhood, the district when I live at, uh, um, when, I, uh, when I have my studio for the first time, I lived there for six years with my wife was when we started our life together. And uh, uh, I can identify this, uh, this environment, this, um, this uh, uh, powerful colors that is very different if you walk in a rigid street in Sao Paulo that's based in a more European um, taste. Here in the suburb, you have a greater population immigrants from the northeast of Brazil when my, come, my family come. And uh, we have this joy of the color. Even in a, in a, in a very confusing environment. And uh, um, when I was looking for my identity as an artist, I have the feeling that I couldn't, uh, uh, could be better if I started to look in my environment. So I start to do some uh, paintings and, and, and on canvas and paper, looking for the architecture. And when I found these photographs of the, the facade in the northeast of Brazil, and with a, a tempera was, uh, I uh, start to, to develop in a deep way the egg temper. And um, I, I really enjoy this purity of the color. And, uh, and also I travel uh, to Italy, visiting museums uh, to research about this painting, Italian painting in the Middle Ages. And, uh, but, I, uh, I spent some years to understand how it works with this technique because it's uh, easy. Uh, you need, we need to understand uh, the proportions, 
how it could work to you. Uh, you need to prepare very well the, the painting because it's an organic painting, so you need to be careful. Uh, you need to use a fungicide, you need to prepare very well the surface. But if you have this discipline, <laughs> you can um, uh, have a good uh, quality of color. It is a very particular quality of color. Um, and I, I would like, I, I would go deep in this discussion, just to finish it. Uh, if you, you look some examples of tempera painting in the folk culture, like in these houses in Brazil, you can yes, feel, yeah. you can feel this a sense of purity, of um, luminosity. And uh, to me, it has an interesting relation with religion, too, in some way, because you celebrate something by the color. And a lot of Brazilian culture, religious culture, African Brazilian religious, the color is essential. And if you look for the painting, the Italian, or in, in different countries in, in Europe, in the Middle East, uh, the color have a, a metaphorical meaning of light. And light is a meta metaphor of God. So you celebrate the creation by the colors in the Middle East painting. The vitrals celebrate the light crossing the, the color. A painting is uh, something that the light cross and come back to us. So when you tend uh, a different technique, you choice the way that the light you cross the material and you arrive to your eyes. So you are talking about light and light uh, is knowledge. Night, light is a, a good metaphor do you think about? Maybe that's a no piece for this film, Nicole. <laughs> <laughs> we'll have to, to finish now. Um, what we we can do is to play the, the film again, so whoever arrived late can see, and whoever wants to join in the back and, and have questions to Nicole and, and Andre, please do. Thank you.